We've rebuilt Hull. We've rebuilt Sunderland. It's only right that we rebuild the third and final team relegated from the Premier League last season. We're about to rebuild Middlesbrough. G'day guys, how's it going? It is Jared H. to here. Welcome back to yet another rebuild. As I said, we're headed back to the Premier League and we a rebuilding Middlesbrough. Highly requested in the comments section. It's going to be quite an interesting challenge. Can we save them in this season and can we take them to the Champions League final? For those of you who have not seen a rebuilding challenge video yet, here are the rules. So the main objective of this is to take a team to the Champions League final. We will be simulating every single game up until the Champions League final, which we will play ourselves. We can make whatever transfers we like. Like, realistic, unrealistic, it does not matter. There's a big focus on the transfer window, only showing players that we sign. And finally, don't get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. Let's get into the rebuild. But fellas, make sure that if you are enjoying this rebuild, if you do go on to enjoy it, that you leave a like on the video. And you know the drill by now. If you are new around here, make sure that you bloody scorpion kick that subscribe button. So this is going to be our starting 11 for this opening season here. Now, the main positions I want to upgrade, I want to bring in a first-team quality striker. I want to bring in a centre-back that can play this first season, let Ben Gibson grow a little bit on the reserves, and then get him in in the second season instead of Espinosa. And I also want to bring in a young striker that can grow over this first season. And then when Negredo returns to Valencia, we can put him in there. But anyways, let's get into the business now and see how much we can rebuild Middlesbrough. And we're going to make our first signing for this Middlesbrough rebuild. It is a rotational striker, a future first team striker. This guy has a fantastic story, worth a Google, but Adamala Lookman from Everton, the young English striker, coming in for £800,000. And we're going to make our second signing here a proven Premier League, well, I wouldn't say proven, but a Premier League defender, Kevin Vimmer from Spurs. We picked him up on an absolute bargain, only £8 million for the Austrian. And a massive pickup here, a club record fee is about to be paid if we can convert the wages, I'm sure we can. But Danny Welbeck, Arsene Wenger is letting us sign him for £20 million. Welcome to Middlesbrough, Danny. And with the signing of that guy, Welbs, this is what our squad currently looks, uh, looks like. We've picked up three Premier League players. Don't worry, I'm not going to only sign Premier League players, but some decent pickups there. And here we are with four hours to go on transfer deadline day. We've made our first player sale here. Rudy Gested off to the Syria, off to Genoa for 4.1 million. And with one hour to go in this opening transfer window, here is a look at the business we have done. So we identified what players we wanted to get. We got them nice and quickly and we've made our side nice and strong. Let's see how we're looking when it comes to January. So here we are halfway through our opening Premier League season and we're doing a lot better than I expected. We are sitting in 12th position, mid-table. Although we're on 23 points and that means we're only five points out of the relegation zone. So it's still quite possible that we could be relegated if we don't continue winning in the second half of the season. But on the other hand, there's room for potential. Man City and Liverpool are on 31 points, only eight points ahead of us. So technically, if we have a really good second half of the season, we could be playing Champions League next season. Whilst I think the, the first option, the relegation option is a lot more likely, we're gonna be hopeful. But let's get into January now. Let's see who goes and if we can strengthen our squad. And we're going to make a signing here for our first team in January. We're bringing in a new central defensive midfielder, Lucas Tuzart from Lyon. £9 million. That is one solid pickup. So we must have had an absolutely dreadful second half of the season, but it is fortunately not bad enough to get us relegated. We survived the first season of the Premier League. We were eight points clear of Sunday. So it wouldn't have come down to the last day and it's Sunderland Burnley and Hull all being relegated looking at the top 
Manchester United ended up winning the league. In the FA Cup, I know for a fact we were knocked out the game before the round of 16 to Manchester United. And it is Liverpool that went on to win the FA Cup. And we didn't manage to make the last 16 of the EFL Cup either, which is a little bit disappointing. Spurs defeated Crystal Palace in that one. Barcelona defeated Bayern Munich on penalties to win the Champions League. And Manchester United defeated Arsenal in an all-English affair to win the Europa League. So here is our squad report at the end of the first season. We survived by the skin of our teeth. Hopefully we continue to improve next season. We'll have to make a few signings for sure. We do have Callum Chambers going back to Arsenal. Might even look to bring him in permanently or just go in for a new right back. Probably need to look for a new goalkeeper as well as Victor Valdez is starting to get on a little bit in age. But as you can see scrolling through here, a lot of our young players are growing and a lot of our players are out on loan. So we'll get a lot of them back we didn't get too many transfer offers in this first season, so hopefully we can shift on a few players and be stronger come this time next season. So we're going to begin this second season bringing in a new striker. Lookman hasn't progressed as quickly as I was hoping, so we're going to bring in Sebastian Haller in season number two for 14 million. And we have sold Adam Forshaw to West Brom for 3.6 million pounds. And since Callum Chambers went back to Arsenal, we need to bring ourselves in a new right back. We're going to go ahead and get Thomas Munier, the Belgian right back from PSG. Used to be an absolute beast in like FIFA 13, FIFA 14. I remember I had my Everton series, I think it was, in FIFA 13. Bought this kid when he was 21, 22. Was an absolute machine. We're going to bring him in here with Middlesbrough. 17 million. It's taken me a season and a half to realise that I spelt our manager name wrong. I called us Mr. Rebuilt, not Mr. Rebuild. I think I'm getting a little bit too far ahead of myself. We're only one season into it. So a relatively big transfer here, Martin Darun off to Hamburg for 12 million pounds. And we've sold Nathan McGinley to Morecambe for 210,000 pounds. And on transfer deadline day, we're going to get in another young English talent, Tom Davies from Everton, burst onto the scene last season, coming to the club for 2.3 million. So halfway through the Premier League season, we are absolutely killing it. Eighth position 30 points now we could do what we did last year and slip down the table but we're doing really well i wanted us to finish mid table and so far we're exceeding all expectations one thing i've noticed is that look at 11 through to 13 spurs man city and liverpool really surprising to see some of the bigger clubs in the premier league down so far west brom west ham and watford giving it a good run but anyways let's see what business we can do in january we're gonna make our first pre-contract signing for this middlesbrough rebuild Johan cardinal currently at nice He's going to be our replacement for Victor Valdez, who's starting to get on in age a little bit and is going down in overall. So next season, Johan Cardinal coming to Middlesbrough on a free transfer. And a player departure here, Guidiera. I've butchered his name, but I believe he's Algerian and I definitely know he's off to Nottingham Forest. So we did what we did in season number one. We had a shocking second half of the season. We dropped down from ninth position all the way down to 15th. That's exactly what we didn't want to do. And technically, we finished closer to the relegation zone on points than we did in season one. But the main thing, I guess, is that we get to survive in the Premier League for a third season. And with our players developing and Cardinal coming in on a free, I'm hopeful that we can grow a lot better and although it's a bit of a stretch, maybe push for Europa League football? Once again, we didn't make the knockout rounds of the FA Cup. And it's the same scenario with the EFL Cup. Chelsea won the Champions League. And PSG beat Spurs to win the Europa League. So this is where we end Season 2. We've got a 43 manager rating. Do we keep our job? Yes, we do. Let's prove the board right in Season 3 and absolutely kill it. So we're going to kick off this third season with a big player 
player signing, and I've done a little bit of research on his name. It's not Lucas Dijnay. It is Luca Digne from what I've been able to gather. I know my pronunciations suck. I'm trying to learn them better. But Luca Digne from Barcelona, the French left back coming in for 24 million. And we've sold Carlos de Pena to Blackburn for 575,000 pounds. And we've sold one of our reserve goalkeepers, Thomas Mayas off QPR for 1.2 million. And we have sold Brad Guzan, the American goalkeeper, off the Nottingham Forest for a million. And on transfer deadline day, we've sold George Friend to Burnley for 1.1 million pounds. And another transfer deadline day transfer, Grant Lee Beater off to Derby County for 600,000. Of course we get an injury to Digne as soon as we bloody sign him. So just like most seasons, we're halfway through it and we're doing not too bad. 10th position, let's just hope this is the year where instead of going down and joining Swansea, West Brom and Sunderland, we go up and join Man United, Crystal Palace, Arsenal, Chelsea and Leicester. We'll have to wait and see. Let's get into January. Let's get into the transfers. So we're going to make a pre-contract signing here. We're going to bring in a brand new top quality center back for the side next season. Kurt Zuma from Chelsea. One of my favorite players to bring in on FIFA 17. Coming to Middlesbrough in season number four. And with two hours to go in the January transfer window, we've sold Daniel Ayala to Leicester City for five million pounds. So here we are at the end of the season. It's a little bit better progress. We're making slow but steady progress in this rebuild. Finishing in 13th position. It is Hull City, Bournemouth and West Brom being relegated. And Chelsea win the Premier League title on goal difference ahead of Man United. So we actually made it to the last 16 of the FA Cup this year. But we lost to the eventual winners in Liverpool. But the same can't be said about the EFL Cup. Barcelona did defeat Man United to win the Champions League and Inter Milan won the Europa League. So hopefully with the addition of Kurt Zuma in the fourth season, we can take the Borough side to a brand new level, maybe even push for some Europa League. It's been slow progress, but we're starting to get there. We're going to begin this fourth season with an absolute steal. Alan Halilovic, the Croatian center attacking midfielder, an absolute bargain. 20 million pounds plus Gaston Ramirez. That is a huge signing. And a player departure here, Ben Gibson off to Everton for 11 and a half million pounds. And Jordan Rhodes has left for Norwich. He's going there for 2.8 million. A monster signing here. Julian Brandt, who is now 85 rated, is going to be coming into the club for 28 million pounds plus Victor Fisher. We have made moves this window. So this is unexpected. We have slowly been climbing up the tables in this rebuild and now halfway through the season or virtually halfway through, we are eight points clear at the top of the Premier League table. Now, we, there's a good chance we'll be able to hold on and win the Premier League title, but my main focus now is to win the Champions League. I seem surprised, but I really shouldn't be. We've got Kurt Zuma, we've got Halilovic, we've got Julian Brandt, and they're just a few of our top quality players. So we're gonna get into January now. I don't think we have to change too much, but let's see what happens. So with three days to go in this January transfer window, we have to get some business done now. We've sold our main goalkeeper, Johan Cardinal, who we brought in on a free transfer to Schalke for 30 million pounds. So let's go out there and bring ourselves in a new number one. And we're gonna bring in our goalkeeper replacement, Kevin Trapp from PSG. He is coming in for 30 million pounds. So we sold our main keeper, Cardinal, for 30 million, and we get an upgrade, Kevin Trapp, for 30 million. So we didn't end up winning the league. We blew the lead we had ahead of Man United. We end up finishing in third position, but it's all right. We get a shot at the Champions League next season. That was the biggest thing this year. 
I wanted to get Europa League. We've exceeded that expectation. We didn't win the league, but I'll cop it. Norwich, Villa, and Sunderland all going down. And in the FA Cup, we were knocked out by Liverpool for the six, for the second year running in the round of 16. And we lost to Manchester United in the EFL Cup final. We came so close to doing the double, we came so close to winning our first silverware. Manchester United have done the treble. They've had a fantastic season. They win the Champions League final, continuing Benfica's curse by beating them 3-0. Hopefully we're there next season, or at least somewhat close to that. And Roma, they won the Europa League. So here is our squad report at the end of this fourth season, and we've built ourselves quite a nice little team. I'm pretty happy that we've only made two pre-contract signings, and I'm gonna try to limit myself. Maybe one more pre-contract, if that, through the whole rebuild. We've built a good squad. Hopefully, we can have a decent little run at the Champions League next season. Do I think we'll win it? I don't know. We've got some good players like Halilovic, like Brandt, like Zuma. But I don't know. It's hard to tell in this game. But I'm just, I'm pretty surprised. I'm pretty happy with the progress we've made. So that is season four in the history books. Let's get into the fifth season and see how deep we can go in the Premier League. Not the Premier League, the Champions League. We are upgrading our striker departments now, kicking off this fifth season. Danny Welbeck, you've been here since day one, mate, and we appreciate your service, but you're getting traded. You're going to Borussia Dortmund, so not the worst place to end up, but you're getting traded for Luciano Vieto, the Argentine striker, coming in for £15 million. Pounds. So I did want to have Adama here for the entire rebuild. He has a potential of 85, but he was not growing nearly as quickly as I would have hoped. He's been stuck at 81 for the past season or two. So we're going to go ahead and get Federico Bernardeschi from Fiorentina, £28 million pounds plus Adama. That is a pretty decent pickup. We've really upgraded this squad big time. Welcome to Middlesbrough. So we are in Group D for our first Champions League experiences, and it's a fairly strong group. I know sometimes I go on and say groups are stronger than they really are. This is a decently tough group. Leverkusen, Roma, and Celtic. Will we get out of the group stages? We'll have to find out. Let's simulate to them in three, two, one. So we have failed big time in our first attempt at the Champions League. We finished third in our group. Somehow, with the with the team we have, we have not qualified out. I know I said it'd be a tough group, but still, I'm a little bit surprised. So here we are just about halfway through the Premier League season, and things aren't exactly going great in the Premier League either. Sixth position, that is a far fetch from where we finished last season in second, or third actually. But the good thing is we're only a few points, we're four points out of the top four, so a big second half of the season is in order, but it'd be a big failure if we don't make Champions League football next season. Anyways, we're in January. Let's get into it. Let's put our Champions League disappointment behind us. And we're going to sign our final pre-contract player for this rebuild. I've put a stop to it. That's our third pre-contract signing, so fair's fair. Alessano player from Nice coming next season to be our number one striker on a free transfer. So here we are at the conclusion of this fifth season and we have snuck into the Champions League. I think finishing fourth means we have to go into the playoff games, but with the additions of player coming in next season and hopefully we can make one or two more big pickups, I think we should be able to get through to the group stages, fingers crossed. Man United do defeat Chelsea to lift the title and Bournemouth, Burnley and West Brom all going down. In the FA Cup, we were eliminated on penalties to Liverpool in the quarters. Liverpool did go on to win the FA Cup. And we lost again in the EFL Cup final. Spurs beat us. Manchester United did win the Champions League final on penalties. And Lyon won the Europa League. So that is the fifth season done and dusted. Let's get into season six and hopefully, finally, win the Champions League. 
So we are going to kick off season number six with a midfield signing, a big midfield signing. Toussaint wasn't progressing as much as we wanted, so we're going to be proactive and get in a replacement. Granite Xhaka, the Arsenal defensive midfielder, coming in for 31 million. And a new goalkeeper is coming in here, Alphonse Ariola, the goalkeeper, 10 million pounds plus Kevin Trapp. So Kevin Trapp. Going back to PSG, Alfonso Ariola in to Middlesbrough. And we've sold Sebastian Haller to Juventus for £40 million, so not a bad bit of business there. And we're going to make a monster transfer here. Thomas Munier plus £30 million for one of my favourite players at the moment, Hector Bellerin from, or Hector Bellerin, however you pronounce it, from Arsenal. That is a huge pickup. So here is our group for our second attempt at the Champions League. Hopefully we do a lot better than we did in Season 5. Hopefully we actually get out of our group this time. But you guys know the drill. We're going to simulate from now until the end of the group stages. So 5 seconds for you, about 5 minutes for me. We didn't fail. We managed to get out of our group. And in Season number 6, we have a proper shot at the Champions League knockouts but we will face a huge challenge first up first up as we take on AS Roma and just about halfway through the Premier League season we're in the top four which is good as I've said a few times winning the Premier League is nice but it's not the main goal Champions League football is always the main goal. So absolutely no business happened in January. I was going to sign someone on a pre-contract and then I remembered last year I said no more pre-contracts. So I'm a man of my word. We're going to get right into the Champions League knockout games, hoping that we can get into the final and complete the challenge this season. The first leg is away against AS Roma. So we're traveling to Italy can we defeat Roma here and get our one foot in the door to the friggin' no way? Okay, we're getting a away goal. Can we get one foot in the door into the quarterfinals? Bernadeschi and El Shirawi both scoring goals. So we have an away goal, which is very, very important. Bernadeschi gets a brace. Player gets injured, which is not what we want to see. Hopefully that's not too bad. But to three away goals. Lookman gets us a third away goal. 10 minutes to go. This has been a great first leg. 3-1. So we're at home here for the second leg back at the Riverside. We have three away goals in our back pocket. Hopefully we can hold on to it. Bernadeschi is out for this one with suspension. So I've moved Halilovic to right mid and then I put Tussard up at center midfield. Halilovic gets us a goal to make it 4-1. We are looking golden here. As long as we don't concede three goals, 2-0, 3-0, we're killing Roma. Absolutely killing them. We're 6-1 up here. Can we make it 7-1? Come on, yes, 4-0. This is disgraceful from Roma. 5-0, what? 5-0 against Roma. We have just torn them a new one. And our opponents for the Champions League quarterfinals is going to be Atletico Madrid. They overcame Bayern Munich in the round of 16. Two all, so they must have won on away goals. But look at us, 8-1 against Roma. If that's not a statement, then I don't know what is. So here we go, the first leg at home at the Riverside. Kevin Vimmer unfortunately out for the next two months with an injury. Bernadeschi back into it, so... We've got Fry and Zuma as our centre-backs. Fry is 79 rated. And they make the most of it in the fourth minute. They get an away goal. Although last time against Roma, we started off conceding first. So hopefully we can win 8-1 again on this aggregate. We need a goal back though. They've got an away goal as well, which makes it even more dangerous. But Julian Brandt does tie things up here. 20 minutes to go. Can we get a second goal? 10 minutes to go. Please, come on. No, one all heading into the second leg. An away goal for them. So we are away here for the second leg. We need a goal. We're at the Estadio Vincente Calderon. And we need an away goal early. We need to take that out of the equation nice and early. Come on. Big start needed. Same squad as before. Yes, we get the away goal. Vieto against his former side. 
does get us an away goal. So it is advantage Middlesbrough. They equalize, so it's all tied up. Halilovic gets us the away goal advantage. Okay, now Atletico Madrid need to win this game. They can't draw it. They need to win. Come on. 10 minutes to go. Can we hold on? Hold on. Yes, there it is. We're through to the Champions League semi-finals. We are absolutely killing it at the moment. So, interesting Champions League semi-finals here. On one end, it is Chelsea versus Manchester United. On the other hand, it is a team we have already rebuilt. It is Benfica versus Middlesbrough. Benfica looking to break the curse in this save. We're looking to get Middlesbrough through to their first Champions League final. Let's see who makes history. So here we are at home, the Riverside Stadium for the first leg once again, taking on Benfica. Come on, can we get another huge victory? Another 5-0 result would be, just it would just be superb. It would just, it would be great. It would virtually book us our seat in the Champions League final. But it's a bit of a slow start here. Benfica have a very good side in FIFA. Such a high potential squad. They miss a penalty, but they get an away goal. No, why do we keep doing this? Ribeiro gets them an away goal. We need to tie things up. Please. 10 minutes to go. Please. Somebody score. No. 1-0. Heading into the second leg. This is not good so we are on the road here against Benfica needing an away goal to at least send this one to extra time we're one nil down and we need the lads to put in a massive performance we've got the front line capable of bringing it back but whether we do or not is a different story let's get on the board early no okay so we've got an away goal but they are 2-1 up here they get a penalty player gets a goal back we're into the second half. We need a goal. If we can score and it stays that way, we will go through. Yes, Vieto! We're ahead on away goals. Please, 10 minutes to go. Five minutes, please. Yes! We get through over Benfica on away goals. And Millsborough are through to the Champions League final. So it will be an all-English affair in the Champions League final. We're versus Manchester United. A ridiculous amount of times in this rebuilding series they always get a ridiculous squad can we take them down once again we've lost to them a few times we've defeated them numerous amounts of times let's hope we can add another one to the win tally taking a look around the rest of the leagues Liverpool they defeat AC Milan in the Europa League final I'm getting some Istanbul 2005 flashbacks going on here, except it's the Europa League, not the Champions League. Unlucky, fellas. And in the Premier League, we scrape into the top four for the second year in a row. So, if we do not beat Man United tonight, we will be getting another chance in Season 7. Norwich, QPR, and Swansea all relegated. In the FA Cup, we're nowhere to be seen. And the same can be said about the EFL Cup. We were pretty damn bad in the domestic cups in today's rebuild so far. But here is a look at our squad report. You guys know that I go through and show you the squad report before we get into the Champions League final, regardless of whether we win or not. And I'm going to say that our player of the episode, oh, that's a tough one. I'm probably going to say Kevin Vimmer because he's been here since season one. He's retained his starting 11 spot the whole time, and he's been pretty damn solid for us. I'm excited to see him get some game time in the Champions League final. He's back from injury. But speaking of the Champions League final, let's get into it now. Let's take on Jose Mourinho's Manchester United. Chasing miracles, no, that's not how my story goes You could be my hero before I let you go Cause I don't go chasing fairy tales, no, that's not how my story goes I've been down this road before, I've seen the fall We've 
taken them from relegation battlers to the Champions League final. Can we defeat Man United on their home turf? Let's find out. Digne going through. Vieto. Bernadeschi turning Luke Shaw. Can we get off to an early start? We're going to go back. Hector Bayer in. Let's just pop it. Oh, that was a terrible attempt. They're on the attack here. Krani Vita up against Halilovic. Going. They shoot. Save from Ariola. Throw in in dangerous position. Bernadeschi. Going back to Bayerin. Going to Granit Xhaka. Hey, Halilovic. Player. We're just passing it. No. Win it back. Go. Here we go. Vieto. Go. Shoot. Save. No. Free kick here in a deadly position. Bernadeschi to line this one up and take it. Bernadeschi hits that one. Oh. What a save from David De Gea. I couldn't quite see what happened, but he made the save. I want to see the replay of this. Here we go. That, that is a save and a half. If only we had a bit more pace on it. They're in the attack here, Man United, just before half time. One matter through, blocked. Can we hit him on the counter? Here we go. Just before half time. It would be brilliant if we got a goal right now. Bayer in through to Bernadeschi. Going there. Lovely 1-2 passing between Vieto and Bernadeschi. The Italian's running down the line. He's going to hit it. Back post. No. Finish it. Bayer in. He scores it. Hector Bayer in. Man United had no clue what they were doing. And the Spanish right back has given us the lead there. An absolutely shambolic goal to say the least. But we have struck a, da a dagger in Man United's Champions League title hopes on the edge of half time. I thought he was going to hit it first time there, but it falls off the foot of Ateki and he heads it home. Lovely stuff there. De Gea had no clue. We have a free kick opportunity here. Virtually the identical spot from where Bernadeschi took it in the first half. Let's try doing it again. Forcing a good save out of De Gea again. Bernadeschi's going to hit that one off the crossbar this time. You're absolutely kidding me. How has he not scored one of them yet? They're on the attack here, Man United. One matter. Going out wide to Marcus Rojo. They're really pushing it high up if Rojo's up there. They're going through again. They square it. We've given Griezmann the freaking... We've given Griezmann the advantage with the header, but luckily, Ariola makes a brilliant save. Good stuff from Brandt. Going to player. Going here. We see the run through the middle. Halilovic, finish it. Win us the game! Oh, it took one touch too many. I was about to pull it, but the last touch was very strong. Can we put the final nail in the coffin of Manchester United here? Can we score a goal? We're going to go out wide. Some pretty average passing. Get that one. Get that one, Brent. Oh, keep going. Just win possession. No. They've got good numbers now. Oh, my God. We have just been saved by the referee. They were about to score, but Middlesbrough, the scenes... Middlesbrough are Champions League winners. We've defeated Man United in their own backyard and we have completed yet another rebuild. If you enjoyed today's rebuild, fellas, make sure you leave a like on the video. Four days of uploading in a row. I feel like I'm going to pass out. I'm so tired. But make sure you leave a like. Hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. Check out my social media links. But I'll let you guys enjoy the title celebrations. It's been Jared HD here. I'm out. Peace. Can't stop.